these are our paint colors youtube fam we're painting the outside of the house we are trying to figure out the color we want and so far we've mowed through three four five six seven eight nine ten thirteen colors thirteen colors yeah it's been a little bit of a process to say the least but i think we have finally figured out which one we're going with i think we're going with that guy right there but anywho good morning youtube fam mike here shooting another hot adventure video heading back out to do a little more exploring today grab the fishing rods because that would help in our quest to fish go ahead and unplug this that's fully charged up We are right on the other side of a cold front that just moved through the area. Like a week ago, we were having like 85 degree weather. And then like two days ago, it was like 48 as a high. So quite a big temperature swing. But today is supposed to be like 68. Tomorrow is gonna be in the 70s. So I'm hoping it'll be at least decent while we're out there. And you know, we're just gonna set this right here for now. Sometimes it's a little frustrating at the amount of equipment that I'm bringing on these trips. And uh, I have to remind myself it's because, because I'm filming it and I just need all those little extra knickknacks and doodads to be able to film, you know, film it right. Have a film a quality piece of material. Ah, she starts. Heat going. So before we get started today, gotta stop by my bait dealer. One of my bait dealers, I should say. Have him hook me up with hopefully some of the finest shiners and puffies in the area. Man, that's good coffee this morning. It sounds like my pops. Man, that's good coffee this morning. Man, he used to say that. <gasps> What's happening to me? Yeah. Bait time. He's got herring this days. Oh yeah, he does. Don't know if we'll need any, but he does. Micah. What's up, Ethan? How are you doing, man? Okay, what's going on? Dude, just living the dream. Just coming in for some bait. How's how's business been? Been good, been good. Uh, I was gonna say it's probably start. warm weather that's going on and uh, yeah, they going early too. So I was gonna say it's yeah. picking up. I'd have to imagine. Yeah, so. February was real nice, and uh, I mean this past week the weather was a little bit windy and kind of cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the fishing's been good. People are itching nice. to go out. So it's been good. Dude, I'm in the same boat. I came by. Do you have any shiners on you? Yeah. I was gonna get some large shiners if you have some, and I was gonna probably get like. Well, heck, I'll probably do like 18 shiners. Okay, you want uh, uh, small, medium, or large? I'll do large, and then I was gonna get like, uh, maybe like three dozen toughies. Check this out, he has like upgraded all the tanks. These are all used to be like concrete tanks in here, and they hammered them all out. And now they've got uh, all these nice little bait tanks in here. And I got awesome. a... Another one coming too. I go, oh, do you really? Yeah, what are you going to put in that? Uh, I'm going to replace that one. And I got, it's another one identical to this one. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I'm going to have a match of pair. Dude, that's awesome. And of course, you still got the crickets. A lot of people buy crickets this time of year. Not so much this time of year. Uh, okay. But they'll get started up around, uh, around April when the Grim and Shell Crackers really start biting. Ah, uh, okay. I'm thinking too, with this week of 70s, it's just start to get everything kind of right as far as uh, uh, the fishing should start to even yeah, out a little right. bit oh, yeah. yeah when it gets to the 70s oh yeah now like, you ever use beetle spam before in your brims what is it beetle spam like you try to want the white eye right there like come on right there look it's like oh no kidding love it you throw it out there i forgot this guy but he's still in something county but it's like he's like an indian guy he's on on the real slow big slab of cracker on 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 the black river like you ever heard really? of the black river right 
Yeah. No, I haven't. Big crap is in that thing, man. Really? Oh, watery got the biggest though. Yeah. Watery, watery does? Oh. Yeah, watery does. Good grief. Now they say area back Nice. There. They tried to say it private. That thing belongs to the state, man. Because I did some research. Oh, yeah. Nobody paid privately because the state of South Carolina, because, you know, when you go down to the tax bill office, mm -hmm. they're going to tell you own nobody on it, but the state of South Carolina. Oh. Hey, hey. it's open season on that. That's lake. right. <laughs> well, I ain't going to fight with it. Like, one thing I do, I pray about it, and I go to my hometown, Italy, and my daddy probably fish, goddamn. It's going to be my way or no way. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hey, hey, good hey, luck brother, to you. Luck, brother, man. Yeah, man, you too. Hey, Ethan, thanks, man. Appreciate you. So I don't know if I've mentioned, but Ethan actually now owns Lake World Bait Shop. He bought it or is in the process of buying it out from Mr. Richard. A lot of you guys know Mr. Richard, if you are a regular on the channel. But yeah, Ethan's been spending about the past six months or so getting everything fixed up and how he wants it. And uh, it's pretty cool. He's kind of my my new regular bait dealer now that Mr. Richard's retired. Have fun in retirement, Mr. Richard. Yeah. All right, now we're ready to go. So I found this sweet little launching spot. They're supposed to be open, but they're not. So we paid our dues. Water looks relatively clean, actually. A lot of pollen. It's that time of year, all the... Uh, Evergreens are shedding all their uh, pollen, I guess, whatever. Let's go do a little exploring. Nice. Okay, let's see, enter. Let's fire this up. There we go. All right, guys, we are ready to set out on another high adventure. So long, Doc. We'll see you tomorrow. Major residential area around here, so we kind of got to take it easy. Can't be buzzing through. A lot of docks, a lot of boats. There's a dead fish in the water right there. What is that? Uh, it's like a big largemouth, actually. Interesting. All right, 32 feet right here. Right out there is like 50. So we're gonna hang out right on this hump, hopefully. Take a look at that. Got something on the bottom there hanging out. Looks good. Anywhere like this, um, this time of year where you just got like a hump kind of right out in the middle of almost nowhere. I mean, really it is nowhere. I mean, the closest bank is, I don't know, maybe 500 yards away. Uh, and you're surrounded by really deep water. Yeah, see, we're marked. There's something down there. Let's get some jigs down. Let's get some uh, some cut bait down there, or some uh, some of these live toughies down there. See if we can't figure out what that is. There's one. Hey, look at that. That's what we're talking about right there. One of these little guys, 10 feet off the bottom, just swimming around all by himself, saying, "Eat me." Oh, hey, dude. He's not going to go easy, is he? There we go, just like that. Right through the lips and through one of the nostrils. Oh. And uh, we just got him on a Carolina rig. And there's probably about four feet of line between my half ounce sinker and bead and him. That way it gives him a lot of, a lot of play. We'll just drop him straight down. This water seems really clear over here. All right, for my second rig, I have a little jig on, tipped with a live toughy, big old split shot sinker on it. And what we're gonna do is actually, I'm gonna just drop this down to the bottom and we'll reel it up maybe about a foot off the bottom. What I'm hoping is, what I'm seeing on the graph down there are white perch. And I'd like to get a few white perch, not only for eating, but also for some catfish bait later on when we go to camp, so. That's the plan anyway. This rod switched it up with a red jig. Still tipped with Tuffy though. And I'm gonna kind of actively jig this one. And we're pretty much set. We're gonna start at this hump and then we'll probably just transition from like this hump out to the main channel and just kind of figure out where these fish are, hopefully. So look at this right here. This is what I'm looking at. See that right there? 
that's a fish that just came up and looked at my line. You see that little streak right along there? That is that shiner that we have down there. So he's in about 26 feet out of 30. That's good, four feet off the bottom. But that's definitely a fish that came up off the bottom to look at that. That's a decent sized fish too. So that's gonna be our striper, potentially even a catfish only four feet off the bottom. But my guess more than likely that was a striper came up to look at that. So good start. We've only been here for a few minutes. So to start getting markings like that kind of right off the bat, good thing. We just got bit on that one right there. Uh, there's something. Oh, there's something right there. On the jig. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this has to be a catfish. Guys, this is on the jig. This is on the jig. On the bottom. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's totally a catfish. I guarantee you that. Oh, <laughs> first fish. Ooh, that's on the little jig. Oh yeah, that feels like a cat. Oh, I was just looking at my graph and I was like, there's something moving through. And all of a sudden my jig just got layweighed. Come on, Oh, look at that. This is an eight pound test line. So I got to kind of take it a little bit easy. Come on, baby. What are we in? Yeah, 48 feet of water. I moved out a little deeper, a little deeper. Figured with this cold front, maybe these fish haven't quite moved up yet. This is the first nice day after the cold front. It feels like a solid fish. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be any world beater, but uh, I think it should be, should be an eater, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, there's a nice cat, look at that. I saw a school of something moving through and that, G er, and that uh, live shiner started to bounce quite a bit. Come here, you, yes, nice. And uh, and I, right, when I was, right as I was looking at that, all of a sudden, bam, this little Porky the Pig decided to come up and hit the jig. <laughs> that is a nice, that's a beautiful channel catfish. Look at the colors on that. It's like a gold color on that. That's awesome. That's the fun thing about dropping little jigs and stuff down around here. You just don't ever know what you're gonna catch. Catch crappy, catch white perch, catch a bass catch a big old probably about six seven pound catfish i've had my buddies catch striper before like that's a that's just a really nice fish right there y'all you know what i might do i don't have anything to fry this up with and honestly catfish is the best fried so i think what i'm gonna do is i think we're gonna actually let this one go good fight Good way to get the skunk out of the boat. If I had some stuff to fry up a catfish with, I'd definitely keep it. But that definitely, she's got, well, well, there she goes. She's got a, a tummy full of eggs as well. So, I mean, the catfish population is pretty hardy. So it wouldn't, that wouldn't really matter. But I think we'll just go ahead and let her go. Well, there's no thinking now, she's gone. Good way to start the morning though. Here we go, let's get after it. Let's keep cruising this area. See if we can find some of them striper. <sighs> We're tipped back up. Let's get it back down there. Still looking to see if I can't find some of them white perch. Delicious tasting fish. It would be rather nice to uh, sup on this evening. <sighs> Just jig, baby. I don't think Al Davis said that. I mean, well, maybe he did. You never know. Maybe when he was out fishing, that's exactly what he would have probably said. Oh, there's a bite. There's a bite right there. Look at that. Look at that. This is a live. That's a shiner. That's a shiner. The shiner just got took. There he is. Yep, yep. We got him. We got him. Oh, no, no, no. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Come on. Come on. Yeah, there he is. Guy's on the shiner. On the shiner. Yes. In a good area. That wasn't even a big take. It just went down. Oh, oh that's a fat one. Oh, my gosh. That's a big crappy. Oh, my gosh. That's a big crappy. That's a big crappy. Oh my gosh, look at that! Oh my gosh! Oh my word, look at that toad! Look at that, on the live shiner! I was like, man, it just loaded on and he didn't even fight! That is the biggest crappie I've ever caught, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Dude, that thing was like suspended! That thing was suspended! Like just right out here in the middle of nowhere! Okay, first off, we gotta get this back down because usually where there's one crappie, there are more. 
Oh my word. That's the biggest crappie I've ever caught. The biggest one I've ever caught. And our shiner's still alive. Come on, there we go. Six, 12, 18. There we go. Okay. I was like, man, this is like the most not fighting a striper I've ever laid into. Okay. We have to weigh this thing up. We have to weigh this thing. Do I have my scale with me? Yes, I do. Oh my heavens. Oh my heavens. Two pounds exactly. Okay, that's not, not the biggest crappy ever, but it's the biggest crappy of my life, guys. Two pound crappy on the live shiner. Oh my word, Let's, how long is this thing? Let's see right here. Oh my word. That is like almost, that's 16 and a quarter inches. <laughs> what a tank. What a tank. Just hanging out here, like in the middle of 50 feet of water. Oh my word. Okay, we're definitely keeping that right there. I don't care what you say. We're keeping that fish right there. <laughs> Good night of living. New personal best crappy right there. That is awesome. We'll just drop him on the stringer there. Put him over the side. Oh, oh, oh my word. Let's see what else is hanging out around here. One catfish, one crappy. I ain't even fishing for these either. I'm trying to get white perch and striper. Oh, that's the fun thing about dropping this live bait down, guys. It's like you just you just don't ever know. You just don't ever know what you could get. Whew. This is fun. So there's, it, we just hit noon o'clock and there's, there are bells chiming in the background. Like either from, it reminds me of like a, it reminds me of like a big like grandfather clock. It's gotta be from like a church or something like that. So in accordance with tradition, that means we got to name this place like something that has to do with the bells chiming. So, I don't know, bell flats? That sounds pretty good. The time just got over, and now it's playing like this soft melody. I haven't heard that before. It doesn't remind me of a church. It's like really somber, kind of sad. I don't feel like a man who just caught a two pound crappy now I kind of feel like I just lost a friend now it's done wow that was like really somber and now I feel kind of morose I'm just like I don't know if I like this fish spot anymore <laughs> that was crazy oh man I feel like I need some happiness do we have a red bull in the cooler here that chime just got me really down all of a sudden I think I brought one did I? Yeah, I did. There we go, Red Bull for the pick-me-up. Well, guys, it has been a long, long afternoon. Oh, with not a lot of fish. Ever since that crappy, just have not been able to find anything else. Um, you know, I've been trying kind of a little bit deeper water, like points out in deep areas, but I'm almost wondering if maybe Maybe these fish are shallower. I'm just not getting a lot of markings when I go to like these little islands and stuff. Speaking of islands though, I have planned on spending the night on this island right here. However, I see a sign up here on a tree. Uh, there's a little beach area right up here. I'm gonna see what this sign says. Hopefully it's not like a no trespassing or something like that. I don't see anything that says no. Oh, this area is adopted by Lara's Lake Memory. Memories. Oh, it's just an adopt a waterway. Okay. We're good. You know, since we're here, I want to hop off. Let's pull the boat up a little bit. You know what? While we're here, I think we're going to go do a little exploring on this island. Let me get my gigging pole here. This is to combat snakes. Now let's see if there's anything to see here. 
Let's go explore our island a little bit. See what's up. Oh, here you go. Look at that. Someone's been here in the past. It's like quite a while ago in the past. A lot of dried leaves and stuff falling over that. Got to be careful where we step. Starting to get warmer and those snakes are definitely starting to come out. What's this? A shotgun shell. Somebody's been hunting. There's really no way to walk quietly through all this dead leaves and twigs and stuff, which can also be helpful though because you can hear stuff moving through it like snakes. So you can hear them shimmying through all the dead. It's getting pretty thick back up in here. Like a natural little animal trail right back up through here. Follow that in a minute. But let's look around the base of this tree first. Big old hole down there. Another big hole right there. This whole thing's dead. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Look at this. What in the world? A fake owl with hookups to the eyes? Eyes must glow. What do we have here? An old camp. Okay. That's totally been burned, the top side of it. Old camp. This might be a little bit better place for us to hang out tonight. I like the campfire right here. Oh, look at this. Check that out. I'm thinking that probably got struck by lightning would be my guess at one point. That's how that's all black in the inside. A reminder that you don't even want to be on these islands when those southern storms move through. I don't know why, but this is just kind of pretty, these little ferns. It's like two of them growing out amongst all these pine needles and debris. Almost like the only green in this area. That's kind of cool. I don't know why. It's kind of cool. It stands out in all this brown thicket. I see something odd up here. Wait, what? That's the bottom to that chair. That's really strange because that chair is all the way over there, probably like ugh, 200 yards that way. Look at this. Oh wow, look at this. Check this out. Probably about two, three dozen beer cans. Another one of those chairs totally burned out. The way the leaves cover these cans though, this would have been at least from last fall. Somebody's been hanging out here. Whew. All the gnats are starting to come out now. Just starting. Fortunately, I haven't really seen any spiders or many spider webs, but uh, you know, this warm weather's starting to slowly creep on. The bugs are coming out. <laughs> ah, I think we have reached the end of the island. Yes, we have. Check it out. This is the west side of the island. Another tree that looks like it was annihilated by a lightning strike, it appears to me. Another camp. This one looks a little more recent. You can see there are a few pine needles in the fire pit itself, but not a lot. And a lot of it looks like it's been cleared away. Because, I mean, you can see the normal amount of 
pine needles that would have fallen. So somebody's been here probably within the last couple weeks would be my guess, maybe even week. Because there are a lot of pine trees around here and there should be a lot more fall than that. Oh yeah, look at that water. And that water is clear over here. Really, really clear. Good catfishing spot. In about a month, you'll see gar cruising around in these shallows. <sighs> All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and head back out to a little bit more fishing. And then I think we'll come back up here, make up camp and call it a day. But we still got a good hour or so of fishing, hour, hour and a half of good light before we need to start making camp up. So let's go ahead and put all this away and shove off. Fish have been pretty bad this afternoon. Apparently those were the only two fish on this side of the reservoir. So, I don't know, I don't know. I think what we are gonna do though, is it's supposed to get cold tonight. It's supposed to get like 31. So I think what we're gonna do is, we're gonna head back to our island and we're gonna start getting camp set up since these fish don't wanna cooperate. Get a fire going, get some supper going and uh, kind of hunker down for the night and try to make it through the long cold night, so. Let's just do it. Get beached! There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, welcome to King. Ah, nothing like a little litter to greet you. There it is. Right. Brought our own wood because you never know if there's going to be wood on these islands. <laughs> oh man. Seriously, there's wood everywhere here. But I just thought, you know, my luck would be, look at this. My luck would be that there wouldn't be any or it'd all be wet or something. Look at this big old stump right here. We're going to definitely burn that. done. Time to blow the air mattress up. I always bring with me a little portable power station. They're so handy. They're like I can charge all my batteries up. I can charge the lights up if I need to, especially if I'm gonna be out multiple nights. And I can have an air mattress. Okay, Rudolph, full power. <laughs> Blanket, pillow, and oh, sleeping bag. Phew. I know I mentioned this in the past, but I always bring this kitty Nighthawk. Um, is this on? Oh, jeez. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Are we done? Anyway, as I was saying, I always bring this Kitty Nighthawk CO2 detector, especially when we're running propane in a tent. This Mr. Buddy Heater, and I know I mentioned it in the past, but it will shut off automatically if it's not drawing enough oxygen, but this is your backup right here because, I mean, all it takes is for for it to happen once, right? Where something doesn't work and you don't wake up. So 
bring bring back up. Now this this thing costs like thirty bucks. Just do yourself a favor. Be smart. You know, as my old football coach would tell me, think. All right, and here are the digs for the night. Got our little lantern swinging around up there. Got a little heater, got the power. And then out this way, we have the island. I actually kind of like the tent on the boat still. I debated about just bringing a tent and I just like setting it up here on the land, like you know, close to the fire or something like that. But between the bugs, the snakes, and well basically the bugs and the snakes yeah, the bugs and the snakes uh, i wasn't too thrilled about the idea of uh of being on land and that's going to be more so like as it gets warmer and more bugs and more spiders and more snakes start coming out uh it's just kind of nice to have the little buffer little water buffer between you and all the little creepy crawlies now you always do run the risk with snakes i mean the water doesn't really phase them i mean they could just as easily you know, slither up and, and jump on the boat. So you do want to kind of watch out for that in the mornings. But uh, as far as spiders and ants, these these islands are crawling, literally, pun intended, uh, with ants. Like, that's one of the reasons, like, a lot of people won't uh, camp on the islands, apparently, is because, like, there are fire ants and just, like, the little sugar ants. They are everywhere. And I found that out last summer. So you really do have to kind of batten down the hatches. So I think we're going to probably just continue to utilize the boat as our camping spot even in the summertime just because i mean it kind of makes sense and it only takes me like 15 minutes to tear it down and jump out on the water and, and be going again no longer than it would if i had my tent out here on land so my wife got me this little tool for christmas actually it's like a little leatherman with all the bells and whistles on it i'll have a link in the description below if you guys want one stack some rocks around him here this guy right here looks perfect there we go perfect I want a little something to try to cook our crappy over the fire with tonight do it a little differently this time look at this i am surrounded by the best fire starter or one of the best fire starters out there pine cones absolutely excellent and this time of year they're coming off the trees like crazy oh okay, that's overkill a bunch of these little sticks already laying in here probably from the Last time they were making a fire. Just throw all those on top, kind of willy-nilly. This thing's gonna go fast, so I'm not too worried about really getting it started. It hasn't rained in a couple days, so everything should be pretty well dry. You know what we're gonna do? I'm actually gonna take these out because I don't want them to burn up because they're nice and green. I'm gonna set them off to the side. And what we're gonna do for now is we are going to get a nice berm of coals built up between those two log jams there to cook our crappy over. All right, I think it's time to clean a fish. But first off, look at that night sky. In fact, let me hop up here. Isn't that pretty? Lord painted a beautiful one tonight. All right, let's get some food. Ah, oh, man, look at that fatty. Now she did. I, I quickly just severed the spine at the back of the head. When you have a really sharp knife, it's a really quick an effective way to just dispatch them. 
No, I need a sturdier knife to do this. Ugh. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Got the big old butcher knife. Guys, I have links in the description below to all this stuff. My tent setup, my cooking setup, my knives, my lights. If you guys want anything, go to the description below. Also, if you want any sweet merch, like, I don't know, an octopus necklace, um, you can go in the description below. Get yourself hooked up. Octopus necklaces made in America by one of my subscribers. Real leather strings. My hope is to roast this guy over the coals. I've never done that before. But we got such a big old pig that I thought we'll do something a little different this time. All right, got our fish cleaned out. Now what I'm gonna do is make slices in the skin. That way our seasoning and such can kind of get down into the meat and not just into the body cavity that's open. Now, first things first, I'm gonna put a little oil on her. Give her a little oily rub down. There we go. Next, we're just gonna crack some fresh salt on everything. All over both sides. There we go. Now, I had a subscriber, Miss Heidi, told me that her favorite seasoning, one of her favorite seasonings, is this Team Weber Kickin' Chicken Seasoning. And she said she loves to use it on bath. So she sent me some and told me I should give it a try. So Miss Heidi, thank you. Guys, this is uh, one of the things I was talking about earlier. Subscribers can send me stuff. I have links in the description below as far as, uh, um, not links, but there is a uh, P.O. box in the description of all my videos. That if you wanna send me something, you can go use that P.O. box like what Miss Heidi did. I've used a lot of my subscriber stuff in the past. Thanks so much to everybody who's ever sent me anything. And so we're just gonna apply pretty liberally here. It, it smells really good. Sweet, I think that's about ready for the fire. Now what I have done is I took my two sticks that are gonna be holding the fish up and I soaked them in water, which is what I should have done before I actually put them by the fire, but they're both green and now soaked in water. And you guys kind of see my fire here. It's died down, but we've got a nice Burma embers built up. So we're just gonna stick these back in just like that. That will keep these guys from burning, which is what we don't want. Now we also have this stick right here, which is also green and has been soaking in the water for about an hour. So this doesn't burn up. We're just gonna slide the crappy right on just like that. Boom. I'm gonna put him over the fire, just like that. All right, there we go. Just set him right there. There we go. All right, as you guys can see, got him stuck on there over the flame. That, uh, bottom part will heat up obviously faster than the top but there's a good uh, good bit of heat I think that'll be should be enough to cook that whole thing hopefully it'll take it a little bit but it should cook looks pretty good now we just wait kind of keep an eye on it and wait for it to get done I guess let me see I think that's ready I think that is looking, looking ready. I think that's as ready as it'll be. All right. A little charred on the bottom, to be expected. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt. She got a little sun. But I don't know, that looks like it's pretty well cooked. Look at the inside here. Yeah, I think that's cooked. Looks good. If not, <laughs> I know that side's cooked. If any of that needs to get finished off, we can always put it back over the fire. Let's grab a fork here. That looks pretty good to me. It's flaking. There we go. There's some nice looking meat. It's all white. Well, bon appetit.
That is good seasoning. That is good seasoning. See, it's so cold. The geese are moving back in. <laughs> I neglected lunch today in my pursuit of fish. So I am very hungry. I wasn't sure about that kicking chicken, but that's a solid choice. That's a really solid seasoning. Got a little spice to it. I'm down for that. That is good. That's really good. I've kind of just ditched the fork. This is going with finger time. Mm. Finger licking, kicking chicken crappy. <laughs> yeah, y'all already know what time it is. It's schmo time. There we go. That's just not a bad stick. Here we go. Where are my marshmallows? Let's do this. First, of course, we have our marshmallow, which we insert onto our stick, like so. Now, the key to roasting marshmallows is low and slow. Because you go too fast, you heat up the outer layer of the marshmallow, but the inside is still just like room temperature. I don't know what it is with like this driftwood, but driftwood burns hot. I don't know if it like, if it's because it just dries out, you know, kind of just like just soaks up the sun and just gets super dry. Like it gets soggy, then dry, soggy, then dry. But man, driftwood is like some of the hottest burning wood. Whew. There we go. I'm sure you probably can't even see that, but take my word for it. It is delectably brown. Now, what I have with me are some Kit Kat bars. What you do is you carefully remove the Kit Kats from their pouch. You don't want them to break apart. Now, we take our Kit Kat, we slide our marshmallow right onto one Kit Kat. We take our second Kit Kat right over top. <laughs> Just like that. And you have yourself a s'more, a Kit Kat s'more. Now, the reason I like this is because it cuts out one ingredient, the, um, the graham. You don't need the graham because the graham is automatically baked in to your Kit Kat with the wafer. So now you have the chocolate and the wafer combined already. And that marshmallow just fuses it all together. Bon appetit. Mmm. Mmm. Get the crunch of the wafer. You get more than enough chocolate. I mean, the whole thing is covered in chocolate. And when that marshmallow hits the Kit Kat, it starts to melt that Kit Kat. And the only thing I've ever had people doubt me on this for is like, isn't that gonna be kind of messy? And I'm like, you're eating a s'more. S'mores are already messy. So, um, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome. Summer 2022. You're a good way to end the day. You're a real good way. Delicious way. Oh. Alright! You know, it's actually not terrible out. Yeah, we'll get the heater going just just cuz we brought it. We may as well. We're just gonna wake up in the morning, see what the weather's like, see if it's still windy, and just kind of fly by the seat of our pants. Gonna have to do something a little bit different than what we did today. Anyway, we'll figure it out in the morning. I guess I'll just See you guys in the morning. Ah, <sighs> uh, top of the morning. Ugh. Oh, my word. Well, <sighs> that was fairly restful. Ooh, the problem is now I don't want to get up. Ugh. Man, I love this little heater. I think it's so sweet. Shouldn't have to have all this warm stuff on too long today. Since it's going to be 72, just long enough to let that sun come up. 
kind of warm everything up. Ah, good morning world. Well, I still see some smoke from the campfire, so we should be able to get that going. Beautiful morning out. Looks like it should be a really solid day for fishing. You know, it isn't even that bad this morning as far as temperature goes. I thought it was going to be quite a bit colder. But uh, it's actually not, not terrible. You know, I'll bet if we throw some of these little pine needles on that, I'll bet it'd fire right up, pun intended. Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. I brought all this wood down. We may as well use it. Keep ourselves toasty this morning. Well, that feels nice first thing this morning. You know what? I think I think we're going to go ahead and break camp down. And I think we're going to get out on the water and cook breakfast out on the water. Let me see if I have any bait alive still. Uh, a few people have deceased, but I see some fish in there still. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. That way we can fish maximize our fishing time just cook breakfast out there i need my marshmallow wand here ladies and gentlemen for a very special purpose here we go with the wave of the marshmallow wand my boat will be ready for fishing again three two one alakazam whoa look at that <laughs> oh my word okay anyway you can tell i haven't had breakfast Let's go. So long, Camping Island. It was fun. All right, we've got both of the lines back out. Fishing a little bit further back up into this arm of the creek. We were before out there probably about maybe close to a mile, maybe half a mile out that way. But I've come further back up in here and I'm definitely seem to be marking more fish in this area. So maybe we were just fishing too deep. I don't know, we'll find out as the day goes on. All right, check this out. Delicious breakfast. We've got some kielbasa, got some eggs fried up. Now I do have a question for you guys. Maybe somebody can answer this for me. I have this little coffee brewer, right? And in this cup, it's got all these little holes, you know, for the water to filter through. Now, I have to put a coffee filter, though, in this because if I pour my coffee grinds, grounds, the grindies, when I pour the little munchies in to the cup, they'll just go right through these little holes. And so I'm going to end up with a bunch of stuff in my coffee. So it, are, my, are my little grindies, are they too, th like... Are they too small? Do I need to get like, do I need to grind my own coffee? I have like a medium grindy grounds, medium grounds. Like what's up with that? I'd love for somebody to explain that to me because I have no idea why the heck that is that way. And like, it's no big deal to bring the filter, but like it sure would be nice to know how to use this properly. Alright guys, so this is how the day has pretty much gone. It's almost lunchtime and uh, I haven't caught anything. <laughs> I have fished everywhere from like docks to like the deepest point in this area, which is like 80 feet deep. I just have not come up with anything. So I figured let's go back to the place where we caught fish. And so we're back where we started and I'm going to start at the hump like I did. Work my way out to the deep flat. So we'll just see what we can do here. Hope, uh, hope our luck changes. I have a bunch of these little toughies. So I've got them on a little jig head actually. And then about a foot lower, I've got uh, one of those drop shot sinkers. I'm gonna just drop him down right off the bottom. You know, did I see, wait a second. 
hey, we still got some live big shiners. I've got two left. I didn't know I got three. Holy cow, I did not realize that. Let's get a couple of these out as well. Okay, so we get a bite right here. Get a bite on the shiner. On the shiner. Got him. Got him. Finally! Oh my word. Live shiner. It's another big crappy. Oh my word. Okay, okay, come on. It's another big crappy. It's another big crappy. Oh, baby, look. Oh my gosh. What? What? <gasps> oh, the hook just came out. What? What is this? What is this? Look at that. Right in the middle of nowhere. Again, guys. We, we, I'm dropping. They just must be suspended out here in about 25 feet of water. We're getting everything we can and we're throwing it down at 25 feet of water. Look at that fish. Look at that thing. Oh my goodness, again, on the big shiner. Just smoked it. Let's measure it up here. Check this out. All right, put you guys down this way. Oh my goodness, another jumbo. This is nuts. I'm in, I'm in 47 feet of water. I mean, is that crazy or what? That's 16 inches. That's a 16 inch crappy right there. Let's weigh it up. Here we go. This is a big one. 2.05, 2.05, whoa, whoa. Not quite as long, but just a little bit bigger than the last one. Good grief. Just hammered that large shiner. That's going on the stringer right there. My word, I just I just doubled my personal best in the same trip. Good grief. I mean, if we're getting these out here in the middle, there gotta be some, I mean, there gotta be more of this and maybe even bigger, come on. I would never have guessed to fish for crappy suspended in 25 feet of water. There we go. Well, this is a good size one right here. A good size shiner. I'm getting jigs. I'm, I've got little white jet. We're throwing everything down there at 25 feet. We're adjusting everything. That's two now. I kind of thought it was just a one-off catching that one yesterday. I thought, oh, I just probably found a random one suspended. But now we've gotten two that way. No, that's no fluke. They're in that water table right there. That's a good sized one right there. That's a really good sized one. All right, 25 feet. Back down she goes. We're just gonna totally comb this whole area. Let's go nice and easy. Nice and easy. There's a bite right there. Oh, I missed him. I missed him. Just load it on. That was probably crappy. Here we go, that's all we have left right there. Just a white jig head. And I'm grabbing the biggest toughie that I can find and tipping them on there. Since they're smashing that massive shiner, trying to get as kind of larger profile as I can. Got him, got him, we got him, come on. Boy, this feels like a good fish too. This feels like a good one. Another crappy, another big old crappy. Oh, come on, come on. Guys, another big crappy, another big crappy. We're just trolling, man. We're just trolling, come here, yes, yes, yes. Come on, let's go. Miss that last one, drop down drop down a small jig that small jig head look at the hat right there actually not maybe quite as big as the last ones oh, but still just a toad look at that fish that is a pancake he is gonna be 14 14 inches long 14 inches long I'll bet that's probably like a pound and well let's weigh him up why not i got the scale right here 
1.38, so close, close. Man, there are some toads down there, guys. There's some toads, we're turning this day around. Good grief, it has been so slow, but we are pulling up absolute slabs. Let's give it a little bit longer, see if we are any more down there. See if there are any like three or four pounders. Whew. Guys, we just hooked one. We just hooked into one and it's big. I don't know what it is. This has to be a striper. This has to be a striper. I'm thinking. I mean, he just, he just took it. He just took it. Oh my word. Sorry, I thought the camera was on. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. I got all day. What is it? I'm nervous, man. I'm nervous. What in the world is this? Oh, it's on that little jig. I've got eight pound test line. It hasn't come running to the surface like a striper though. He just, I mean, it just hit and just the rod just doubled. I want to at least see what it is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoa. That feels, that, I mean, it feels like a striper run when it, like, when it takes off there. Good grief. I mean, could it be a catfish, maybe? I wonder if it's a gar. Could it be a gar? It's a sucker! Yeah, it's a big old carp! Oh my word! What? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I was low-key hoping it would be like a massive crappy since we've been catching crappy. This is a big old <laughs> carp. Uh, if that were a striper, that'd be probably, it's probably a 15, 20 pound carp. If I can get it in, we'll weigh it up for sure. Oh my heavens, look at this thing. Oh, you guys see this? Come here. Come here. Look at that. Big old yellow carp. Well, that's a first. And on the live bait. Got him right in the top of the mouth. Good hook set and everything. Oh, he barely, he doesn't fit in the net. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Holy cow. What? What? <laughs> wow! I gotta be careful. I did not expect to hook this right here. Good jumbo. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that thing. Good knit. This is a monster. This might be the biggest carp I've ever caught. Ugh. All right, all right, easy up, easy up. Well, the hook held up, the line held up, the fishing rod held up. Oh my lord, have mercy. Ugh. 17.39. A 17.39 pound carp. Okay, it just goes to show you never know what's swimming around out there. Darn it, you're supposed to be a crappy. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> that is a first. Wow. Well, y'all, I think that is how we're going to end this trip. Kind of a crazy 24 hours of fishing. Not a lot of fish caught, but when we caught fish, I mean, really solid. So I don't know what to think about it. I guess it was pretty good. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me the last 24 hours. We're going to do it again and again and again and again. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one.